Thank you very much for coming. Uh, my name is Łukasz Wcisło. I'm here to talk about correlation analysis in automated testing, as you can read. Uh, at the beginning, I want to introduce myself, uh, tell something about who I am and uh, how the history of my education moved me to uh, such a spec of this presentation. Former, uh, uh, I thought about something slightly different, but uh, it evolved in, into this. Then I will tell uh, what was the problem and what was the purpose of this research. Uh, I will tell you about some map that stands behind all this thing. Uh, and I will go to the use cases and some conclusions, uh, maybe some anecdote. So first of all, um, what was my main purpose? I was a former uh, comp computational biologist, uh, bioinformatic. Uh, I was a person who used uh, very strong supercomputers to uh, simulate uh, biolog biological processes like uh, protein folding, in example. Um, the most problematic issue with uh, such research is that are uh, very pronounced to any performance issues. Uh, because there are millions of mil billions of billions of uh, particles uh, that can uh, be connected to each other in many ways and uh, can have influence one or two in each other. So uh, mm, this is the, the, the performance was crucial. And as I started, as I moved to uh, informatics to uh, IT, I started to be a tester in 3MD app in Poland. Um, I started to work with big test suits, not very big, but big enough to consider uh, that uh, uh, the the speed of the test, the, the time that uh, it would be uh, done and the uh, resources consumed uh, are uh, important. So I thought about um, um, making it some more reasonable to uh, do some... <laughs> optimization of these tests. Uh, and I think that nowadays it's uh, a big team, uh, machine learning, so why don't uh, have the, the, all the tests learn one from each other? You know, if, uh, from the history, well, one test will know that uh, other tests was uh, run and almost this uh, exact uh, time if some other test failed this test also, also failed, or uh, if some other test was run um, several iterations uh, and it couldn't reach uh, its uh, expected outcome, the other test uh, would be or either shortened or uh, not done. Then I realized it was uh, better from the beginning because uh, if tests are correlated uh, in such way, uh, the test suit uh, is badly uh, created. It, it, it has some wrong assumptions and uh, um, <clears throat> the, the test uh, conditions are uh, badly formulated. So, um, this is uh, my assumption. Uh, I don't want to read it again. Uh, I want to make the suits more elegant uh, and save some time and resources. Because for the perfect test suit should be no correlation between the tests. If there are some correlations, tests should be, I don't know, passed because uh, we don't need to be uh, made. Um, then that, that might be, that, that may be some, um, uh, some value measured uh, that can even uh, benchmark test suits, the correlation coefficient. Let's see for, a, uh, for an example. Uh, there are uh, tests in rows uh, and uh, software versions in columns. 
green is passed uh, and red is uh, failed. It seems obvious. Uh, and I considered tests a Boolean functions, which are true or false. Normally, when you uh, computate uh, mm, correlation coefficient, uh, you need to um, do regression first because it's Boolean function even from zero to one. Uh, that wouldn't make any sense. So uh, what I uh, took was a probability, historical probability of passing the test. That was uh, the value that uh, I was um, mm, measuring if the test is below that uh, probability or above the, the, that uh, probability. Uh, next, uh, what I've done, um, it's obvious that tests that uh, will have 100% pass, uh, it uh, doesn't really matter for us. Uh, just the same as uh, software version. That, uh, first, uh, that, that fails all the tests. You know, uh, if we have a power issue at the moment of testing, it, it doesn't really matter, yeah? It's not a matter of tests. So uh, I le uh, I've left only the meaningful uh, test cases, meaningful tests uh, that have sometimes fail. And I created a covariance matrix from them. Um, this may look... Um, suspicious, but it's really very uh, easy math. Uh, it can be done in Google spreadsheets. Uh, from this, I've uh, created a covariance matrix, just as I said before, uh, where on the diagonal is just a variance of each test that is meaningful, and the other fields are covariances uh, between the tests. Uh, next. Uh, I uh, computed the Pearson correlation coefficient. It may look scary, but it isn't. Trust me. Um, and uh, create a correlation matrix. What we can see above, it's just a shape of the uh, test um, test's outcome uh, that was um, from the beginning, that, that was our input. And below, it's uh, on, scattered by me. It's only uh, half of the matrix because, uh, to be clear, for clarification, it uh, should have on a diagonal uh, one because uh, in each field on the diagonal because correlation between a test and the same test is one. Uh, Pearson correlation coefficient has um, always is always between minus one and one. Minus one is a, a, a negative correlation. If something passes, the other thing fails, and uh, one is positive correlation. If something fails or passes the other test, or, uh, their value is always the same. Zero means no correlation, and in a big uh, uh, test suite, or many test suites aggregated in regression, uh, the uh, real values are near zero. Plus or minus, but near zero. If something is like in this example, I, I don't consider one, because it would be obviously error. Uh, but uh, 0.5 or something like this, uh, it is significant. Uh, we can do that just to validate the test, but it wouldn't be much, uh, it wouldn't have much value for us. What can have value? We can, uh, with each regression uh, in continuous, uh, continuous integration, continuous uh, del delivery, uh, we can test uh, each version and um, check the dynamic of changes of this coefficient. You know, if uh, we can see that some values that uh, shouldn't be connected uh, seems to be correlated, uh, correlated from some version in the past, uh, correlation is uh, uh, getting bigger with each iteration, uh, we should uh, see a yellow light and check uh, whether the conditions of the tests uh, are um, prepared uh, correctly. This is a real uh, test outcome from, we are in the 3 and app uh, maintainers of uh, Swiss uh, firewalls uh, firmware of um, PC engines, IPO, maybe some of you used uh, these routers. Uh, and this is uh, the, the test results of the firmware uh, of uh, one of the lines of the one of the routers. Um, we are maintaining them for about two and a half years, but 
these uh, tests are not a good example because uh, our test suits are evolving too. Some tests uh, were uh, created and, I don't know, started to be used half a year uh, ago. So we have not completed a large enough base of tests for a uh, long enough history to uh, make this really useful. But large silicon vendors or uh, hardware producers, I suppose it could be useful uh, just because um, there are very often cases that one person uh, or one team is um, responsible for one suit in regression. Uh, all in all, they might not be aware of uh, correlations between uh, the regression suits. Uh, so in the conclusion, the dynamics uh, can be useful in a, a large sets with a large history and this is a proof of concept. Uh, do not consider this to be a, a white paper or something like this. Uh, idea is quite new and uh, we started to work on this more seriously on our firmware, with our firmware. But this is an anecdote uh, as comes squat. It may be some of, the, uh, some of you know it, uh, have heard of it because uh, these four sets of data have the same, as is written below, mean of x and uh, y variance of x and y correlation and so on. Uh, although they are obviously different. So we have to be very, um, we have to uh, look. Uh, I, I don't consider the statistics to be a red light, to be a fail if something uh, rapidly uh, changes and something is rapidly grow because it may be um, some, from some other reason. But, but uh, yellow light should be uh, considered visible if something occurred like this. This is bibliography and uh, thank you for your attention. I don't you, you do any computations. Uh, all the computations I've done in uh, Google spreadsheets. But thank you. Uh, yes, I heard it, about it. Uh, but this is a new concept. We are just looking for ways that uh, could improve our test suits, and I think it should be considered. Thank you. I beg your pardon? I can hear you. Are, uh, people who are watching the stream have not heard that, so you should probably mention that there is a thing called mutation testing. Uh, yes. Uh, have I heard about the mutation testing? Uh, because uh, it can be used, uh, it can simplify all the uh, computations uh, that we used here uh, with statistics. Yes, uh, we've heard about it, but uh, uh, it's in progress. We are looking for uh, new ways to do it, and uh, I think it will be considered. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah? Okay. Thank you very much for your attention.